and doing another video. This is a comic book review of an incredibly, probably the most overly complex, bland comic book I've ever read in my life. But I wanted to do something real quick. I wanted to talk about failing upwards. And it, I don't even think it's really failing upwards in this case. It's just failing to the side. Because as I'm showing you here, this is for the Forgotten Queen. Um, I'm over the next few moments, I'm going to show pictures of, taken from Comicron on the sales, the shipped sales of the Forgotten Queen. It starts out 7,400. That's actually for a Valiant book, probably not that bad. Um, and then you'll see after that, it just goes to 5,000 and it's just stuck there. So we're talking about this book that, that really just completely stagnated. And this is a mini series. This is the last of a mini series that's supposed to have it's this is supposed to be like a revelation for one of Valiant's major bad guys in in the in the industry. This is supposed to be like uh, the equivalent I could probably think of is Weapon X when they showed how Wolverine got his claws at the beginning, the origins of Wolverine, something like that. And that's what this is supposed to be in the in the the Valiant world. This mysterious character showing how she came up, but. This is Teeny Howard writing this. Now, if you know her career, and kind of, I've kind of watched and kept an eye on her, um, she is about a, she's part of that sub-5,000 club. Um, everything she writes, sub-5,000, unless it's a number one, like the Forgotten Queen. Um, on, the other, on the flip side of that, nothing but glowing praise. You can find, if you find anything in the Shill Comics media on this, it's either saying, hey, this is a comic book and it's coming out, or it's just glowing reviews about women in comics and representation and blah, blah, blah. But it's never about the story because the talent level of, of Teeny Howard, and you know, I've, I've been to comics, comic conventions where she's spoken. She's very outgoing. She's very charismatic. Um, she's got kind of this manic pixie comic girl look to her. Um, so... She should be like a. She's kind of a darling in the in the comics media. They they love to report on things with her and and um, like I said, she's very charismatic. When I when I went to the panel that she was on, it really became the Teeny Howard show. She was like the star of the show. She was she was the one cracking jokes. She was the one with the energy in the room. But then you can never really translate that to things like um, assassinistas or or this or I'm kind of blanking on on the other things that she's done. So as far as writing skill, I've, I've read quite a bit of her stuff um, just by, you know, when I was going through, when I was doing indies, but I would put her on the same writing level as someone like Mags. Um, they, they, have, they have a lot of similarities with their writings. Uh, like they're very similar because both, when they both write, their protagonists tend to become uh, sociopaths. They have a lot of overly complicated blather in their in their stories. They like to do self inserts. They and, and a lot of their books seem to be like failed pitches for for TV shows. Which I don't know if this might have been a failed pitch for a TV show. This has definitely got. If it is a pitch for a TV show, they she definitely wanted Ruby Rose to be in this, as as you'll see when I do the review. But. Um, but you know, for you know, the progressive stack, Mags lands way higher on the progressive stack. So, and Mags is the one who gets way more work. But as far as talent, from what I've seen and from what I've read, uh, they're pretty much the same. They're they're sub five thousand club. Um, uh, although you know, Mags recently joined the uh, sub one thousand club, which is pretty hard to do in in this comic book industry nowadays. But. Uh, yeah, congratulations, Mags Visaggio. You joined the Sub 1000 Club. Um, that's essentially zero audience, but still somehow you managed to get a TV pilot being made. Yeah, I wonder how that happened. But anyway, let me get on to this, this review of, this, of the most overly complicated and bland comic book I have read ever. All right, st thank you for sticking with the video this long. Uh, this is the fourth... Of four, I didn't realize this was a, a mini series until I got to the end of it, and I, you know, I opened the book and I was looking to see who was responsible for putting this trash fire together. And at the bottom, I saw that this was fourth, fourth of uh, fourth of four. 
Now, the way this ends, I was like, why? How would you end a mini series like this? This it's a terrible end to a mini series because it makes you think that there's there's going to be more to the story. But apparently, good news if you uh, are completely bored by this character, she's going to be a major player in the upcoming Valiant universe. So you get to look forward to that. Um, so. This is Ruby Rose Time Traveler. I mean, uh, the Forgotten Queen. <laughs> See what I mean? Um, okay, so here's a synopsis of this. This is like a major bad guy in the Valiant universe. Apparently her powers are to make world leaders, more people into world leaders, but she also has this effect on them that makes them uh, violent and bloodthirsty. So she's, throughout time, um, she's responsible, this woman's responsible for the rise of Genghis Khan and the rise of Vlad Tepe's Dracula. Uh, and she's also responsible for their bloodlust and, and just complete loss of control. Um, so yeah, there's, you, you, you would think in an origin story that you would show some humanity to this character, some sort of like, they used to be a decent person, they used to be an average person, they used to be a good person, and then something happened over time. No, this person has just always been sort of a sociopath and just never was was a good person they just got powers and then much like like they say in this is uh she didn't make him a monster it was in there already she just amplified that so it was the same thing with with the the main character um she was always a sociopath uh it's just when she discovered her powers it amplified that so oh man let me show you this is where a director this is where an editor an art editor should have come in and say, hey, this needs to be more clear. So this is, you know, generic fight. This is the end of Vlad Tepe's. This is how he died. Um, not really historically, but, you know, for the, for the sake of the book, this is how, how he died. So you got this sword fight between Brad Pitt in Troy and I don't know who that is, but you got this sword fight. So you see she catapults over him, over his, his thrust with this stick. But then the next panel right here is landing on the steps and something's going on behind. She impaled him. <laughs> the impaler got impaled. That's irony. Yeah, it's really, really great irony there. Um, but you're missing something. You're trying to lead the reader. You know, you're trying to, you're showing, trying to show action. There's a step or two missing in here. You should have had the landing, the impaling, and then snapping this the stick into, uh, off in him. Instead, it's missing those two panels. So the first time I read this, I was like, wait, what? What just happened? And then I had to go back. And I, I've read this comic book like three times because it's really hard to, to read because it's just a lot of blather and it's not really any character development. It's just things happening to the character. Um, yeah, so here's Ruby Rose. There's the, um, and this is sort of what Teeny Howard looks like. This is like self-insert as well. Um, I skipped some pages for the copyright gods. There they are right there because this was, um, this is where most of the blather was and just the things that you're like, rah, 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 rah. This, does this really matter? And it's just kind of like, it was boring. It was tedious and boring reading those, those pages. And that's why they're, that's why they're over there. Um, I kind of like the, uh, as you see, I'm in my kitchen. I like the lighting in my kitchen. There's my little composter. Um, so this is where, I'm, until I get my man cave set up, this is where I'm going to do my reviews, is in the kitchen. Um, so then she sort of dies because something blew up in there. I don't know, Pandora's box. I don't know. But uh, she dies, and this is where she gets her powers, and then blah, blah, blah. It's more stuff. More stuff happening around her. Nothing really to her or her doing anything other than just trying to control her powers, and it never really goes well with when she's around uh, around mortals, around humans. Uh, this is, once again, this is uh, lazy. So you take this drawing, well, they did it in reverse. They did this drawing, and then to fill this panel, instead of writing, instead of drawing something where there, uh, another pose or another thing, you just basically just do a close-up. Oh, sorry. Burp, right there, close-up. And then you put it right there, and that's how you make a comic book poorly. Um, so Ruby Rose is having a discussion with her. She's part of some secret scientific organization. We'll call them, we'll call them AIM uh, for the sake of, you know, people who know the Marvel Universe and 
people who don't know anything about the Valiant universe, which is 90% of the comic buying audience. Um, yeah, well, that's what we'll call them. So you basically just did a close up there of that. And then in this panel, once again, you took the same drawing, the same model, and then you just erased the arm and you took and you erased this arm. And this is digital. So, and you just change the position of the arm. You get the same head tilt, you get the same colors, you get the same body position, and it's just lazy. Um, so once again, Ruby Rose and there, just blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of talk between these two and something about the queen resurrected and, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't matter because she kills her, like, and so just slashes her throat and all that effort and all the part of the story that were sort of an awakening for her is just thrown away. She slashes her and then goes and finds her immortal brother and uh, blah, blah, blah. Just wants to skin so. Um, the end of this book, there's, once again, speaking of people who fail upwards or failed sideways, um, Vita Ayala, this is a, a, just a little snippet from Livewire, which is a book that also sells sub-5,000. Um, this is a fight scene. This is supposed to be like your Tarantino fight-type fight scene. It has no context. You don't really know why they're fighting throughout this, this snippet. And even, it's just so boring. It's just... The media take having the wrong take on there, and the, the public is oppressing her, and and you know she's misunderstood while they fight at a daycare of some sort. I don't know. They fight upstairs at a daycare. I don't know, but this is oh, hey. okay. So yeah, that's that's uh, the time travels of uh, Ruby Rose. There you go. So yeah. <laughs> Here's my counter. This is, I hate this counter. We're going to change this counter. But, uh, yeah, that's a book. It was made. People reported on it. And it just was a lot of blather about really, let me show you that instead of, it was just a lot of blather about really nothing. I feel nothing about the character of really, she's a sociopath. She's a bad guy sociopath. And I really don't, um, I can't empathize, I can't sympathize with the character. There's really nothing exposed in this story that would make somebody... Like Magneto. Magneto's a bad guy. But when you understand the backstory of Magneto, you can see why he does the things he does, who, why he is the person he is. This does none of that. It just says, oh, she was bad, she's always been bad. She developed the powers and was bad. But uh, anyway, that's, that's Ruby Rose, Time Traveler. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to have another video out probably today. And, um, yeah, thanks for going to hit a like, hit a subscribe, and go out and not buy this comic book. Bye.